Hi guys, Teacher Martin here and welcome to another lesson. Now, today we are going to talk about units of measure or units of measurement. And we're going to learn about all the different types of measurements and how we can compare each one so we can use them in our daily lives. I would say that this area of mathematics is the most practical, the one that we use every day. So it's a very important lesson. It's very important for us to know what are the units of measure. All right, let's get started. What is a unit of measure? Well, to really understand, we have to go back to the basics of the meaning. All objects of mass, so anything that you can hold in your hand, basically, or in some way or form, either have a weight, a value, a length, or a capacity. An object's weight is very important for us to know. Uh, we even weigh ourselves to make sure we are healthy. We need to know weight of objects, uh, maybe if we're going to carry the object or if we're going to send it in the mail. So weight is very important in our daily lives. Capacity tells us the volume of something or basically how much space that object fills. Now, we often use this for measuring gas or liquid because we know that gas or liquid we can't hold steadily in our hands, so we have to put it into a container. Now, depending on the size of that container, we call that capacity, all right? And length shows us the extension of something from end to end. Now, this is very important if we need to basically uh, fit something into something else. So if we need to put a sofa into our new living room, uh, we need to know how long that sofa is so that it fits. Okay. Now, finally, value measures how much something can be exchanged for. So if you have some apples and somebody else wants your apples, then you need to uh, exchange it for something. Now, we usually do that with money. Originally, precious metals were the measurement of value. Um, so it's a very important measurement. However, we're not really going to go into that during this video because as we know, every country has different um, currencies and values um, and they're all basically very similar. They work on a base 10 system. So we're not gonna talk about value, but we are going to talk about weight, capacity and length and another type of measure. Uh, which I'll explain later. So, a unit of measurement is a previously defined quantity. If we, let me take for example a, a gram, okay, hopefully you know what a gram is. Now, what is a gram? Well, we can't really put it into context, okay, because a gram is a gram. It's a previously accepted quantity of something and that is what a unit is so for example a centimeter that's been previously defined so everybody knows a centimeter is a centimeter now those previously defined quantities enable us to compare either of these measurements right let's move on and i'm going to give you a little history lesson imperial versus metric there are two main systems of measurement in the world, and they are both very different. The world is basically divided into two, okay? Now, the first system is called the imperial system, all right? Now, very interesting history, the imperial system. It comes from England or Great Britain. Now, if you know your history, you know that once upon a time, the British Empire covered a large proportion of the world. And there were lots of countries in the British Empire. OK, now the king at that time wanted to use his system, OK, which was based upon the British pound. OK, so he decided that um, all the British Empire countries would use this system of measurement, all right? And it's a very interesting system because it actually is based upon what we call the English system. And that English system used measurements, uh, basically, a lot of them like on body parts, okay? So uh, you would take your foot 
okay and that would be a measurement so uh, later when we talk about foot or feet okay a foot is the size of a, a human male adult foot now the imperial system is still used in ex, some ex-British colonies, okay? Obviously, it's still used in England. Or there's a bit of a mix in England, but it is still used, okay? And if you go to certainly the USA and Canada, the imperial system is their main measuring system. And uh, some examples you might have heard of are inches and miles. All right. Now, the other system is the metric system, all right? Now, the metric system was designed a long time ago in France. The French we can thank for the metric system. Now, the metric system is famous because it uses the base 10 system. And as we know, our mathematic system is a base 10 system. So it kind of makes sense that you would base measurements off the same system that you use for mathematics. All right. Now. It was created by the French and it uses a base 10 system, okay? It's also, what a lot of people would say is because it uses a base 10 system, it's probably the easiest system. And that's why it's been adopted by a very, very large proportion of the world. In fact, it's probably used in all of the other countries except a few that still use the imperial system. And uh, some examples of that, as we know of, are meters and, and grams. All right, so that's our little history lesson. So let's have a look at some of those units of measure, okay? Uh, the two systems are very different, and what I want you to uh, notice is they're not directly convertible either. Um, so you can't directly exchange imperial for metric. You'll end up with sort of decimal values, all right? So let's have a look at the imperial system first, okay? And for measures of length, okay, we have these ones. So we have first inches. So inches are the smallest imperial length. Then we have feet and then yards. And the largest is miles, all right? So they are the four lengths that you really need to know in the imperial system. Now you've probably heard of a few of them before. What about weight then? Okay, now in weight in the imperial system, okay, they use ounces and pounds, right? So ounces are the smallest uh, uh, unit of, of measurement and pounds are a little bit larger. Now there are other uh, weight units uh, such as stone, but stone is really only used, I would say, in England. Uh, it's the only, the only country that I know that uses stone, um, but yeah, Ounces and pounds are the ones you need to know, okay? So let's have a look at capacity then. So how much or how we can measure uh, units of liquid or gas, okay? And the first one, the smallest, is a cup, all right? Yes, just like a cup that you would use to drink a cup of tea, all right? Uh, there's an, an official measuring unit called a cup, all right? Then we have a pint, next a quart, and finally a gallon, okay? Now, what I want to do is quickly go over uh, the comparison. So how we can compare each system unit. Okay, so if we have a look here, if we have inches as our smallest length, okay, we then have feet. Now, there are 12 inches in every foot. All right, so if we have inches to feet, all right, there are 12 of them. Okay, then we go here, yards, there are three feet in one yard all right so three feet in one yard and finally miles okay there are 1760 yards in one mile okay now what we can notice here is there is no pattern no real system whatsoever okay we have 12 into one and then we have three into one and finally we have 1760 into one so there's no real pattern there because of the originality of the system, okay? What about weight then, okay? Well, because there's only two here we're working with, ounces into pounds, there are 16 of them, okay? So one pound is 16 ounces. All right, again, there's no real uh, link or pattern to these comparisons, okay? And finally, com uh, capacity, okay? If we have a cup, 
two cups make a pint, okay? And then two pints or four cups make a quart. And four quarts, as you might have guessed from the word quart, okay? Four of them makes a gallon, okay? So that's how you can compare, okay, each unit of measurement, all right? Now, let's have a look at the metric system. Now, before we start with the metric system, we need to know three very important things. First of all, the word centi is Latin for 100, okay? The word milli is Latin for 1,000. But when we are dividing something into a 1,000 things, okay? And finally, kilo, all right, means multiplying or Yes, multiplying by a thousand. All right, so kilo and milli mean a thousand, and centi means a hundred. We need to know that when we're looking at the name of each unit. So let's get started. Let's now have a look at the length of the metric system. All right, first of all, we have millimeters. That's the smallest length we can work with. Next, we have centimeters. Then we have meters, and finally, kilometers. All right, now let's have a look at weight, all right? Again, we just have two that we can work with. So the first one or the smallest one is grams and finally kilograms, okay? I wonder if before we even get to it, if you can guess what these words mean, okay? These little um, prefixes, okay, in the words, okay? How do they compare there? That might give you a a little hint, okay, into the comparisons. Finally, we have the capacity of our metric system, the smallest being a milliliter, okay, and then a liter, and we can also have kiloliters, okay, kiloliters. Now, let's have a look at the comparison, all right, and let's look at this beautiful system, okay, so millimeters are our smallest, there are 10 millimeters in one centimeter, there are a hundred centimeters in a meter, and there are a thousand meters in a kilometer. Look how perfectly in line that is, okay? That is why this metric system is very easy to use and has been adopted by many countries, okay? Same again. There are a thousand grams in a kilogram. We know kilo means thousand, okay? So a thousand grams in a kilogram, all right? And capacity, there are a thousand milliliters in a liter, and there are a thousand liters in a kiloliter. Okay, so it makes sense why so many countries are using this. Look, ones and zeros, and then we go back to our imperial system. We have 12, 3, 1760, 16. Okay, all different numbers. It's, there's no pattern whatsoever. But with the metric system, it's absolutely perfect, isn't it? All right. Now, a question. Which would you rather use? Okay, I think I know the answer to most of you. Okay, but if any of you said imperial, I wouldn't be surprised. It's a very interesting uh, system with a lot of history. All right. Okay, let's move on. We're going to talk now about a universal measurement. There is one measurement in the whole world that has no boundaries and no borders that everybody uses. So we can get rid of that. What do you think it is? Think of a measurement every single person on this planet uses. Yeah, that's right. It's time. We all use time the same. And time is universal. All countries use the same units. Okay, there isn't a single country that I can think of anyway, that doesn't use the same time measurement as we all do, all right? Now, we still need to understand each unit though, to tell the time and the date. If we don't understand the units of time, then we can't tell the time, all right? So let's go through them as quickly as possible. You probably know them anyway, I'm sure you do, all right? So the first one, the smallest unit of time, well, it's not actually the smallest, but the smallest you would probably use, okay, is a millisecond, all right? And next up from a millisecond are seconds, all right? There's our first obvious one, okay? And there are a thousand milliseconds in one second, okay? So 
a second is divided into a thousand milliseconds. Next up, we have our minutes. Now, how many seconds go into a minute? Yeah, you know it, it's 60 seconds, okay? So, we know that time is not a base 10 system, all right? So we need to learn this. So 60 seconds in a minute, okay? What about hours? How many minutes go into an hour? Yeah, it's also 60 minutes. So 60 seconds into a minute and 60 minutes into an hour, all right? Then we have our days. Okay, so how many hours going to a day? Yeah, it's, of course, it's 24 hours, all right? 24 hours in a day. Now, weeks, we know that there are seven days in a week. Now, we can use this um, for, our, for a shorthand for week, okay? But actually, weeks have their own names, don't they? Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, etc. all right? So, weeks, how many weeks go into a month? Yeah, you know, it's four weeks. Now, be careful with that, though, uh, because a, a numerical month or a mathematical month is four weeks. However, we know that the months of the year are different. So sometimes there's 28 days, okay? Sometimes there's 31 days. So it sometimes could be a little bit more than four weeks, okay? What about a year, then? How many months in a year? Yes, of course, you know that. It's 12 months, all right? Now, we can go a bit further. Okay, what's a decade? Okay, a decade is 10 years, all right? And we call decades by the numbers that they're in. So, for example, the 80s or the 90s, you know. Then next up, we have our century. So how many decades go into a century? Okay, yeah, it's 10 decades or 100 years. Okay, again, look at this cent, okay? It means 100, all right? Dec. All right, there are actually some me measurements that we can use in the metric system that uses dec, okay, which means 10, all right? So you can actually have decimeters, which is 10 meters, but we don't really use them, all right? And finally, we have a millennium, mil, okay, Spanish or Latin for 1,000. So there are 10 centuries in a millennium, okay? And that means that it's a thousand years. And that is time as a universal measurement. So next lesson, we're going to talk about how we can use basic arithmetic with units of measurement. And this is a very valuable skill that we use every day, okay? We need to compare, we need to add, we need to subtract, multiply, or even divide these units of measurement as we go along in our daily lives. So that's something we're going to talk about in our next lessons okay but until then that is it for today thank you all for your time if you have any questions please just ask me thanks bye